to visit us during the Christmas holidays. Oh, no! You must be kidding! Well, what did she say? I'm taking a bus trip to California to spend the winter with my sister Sarah. And since I'll be going through your city, I thought it would be nice to stop off and see you for a day or so. But we can't have Aunt Hattie here. She'd spoil our Christmas. Well, couldn't she stop and see us on the way back? Now, wait a minute, you two. If Aunt Hattie wants to stop and say hello... But how do we know she'll just say hello? Remember last summer when she came for a week and decided to stay all month? And how she complained all the time. Well, it was very hot last summer. So now she'd probably complain about the cold. Oh, she just... I understand how you feel, dear. But maybe you'd complain a little, too, if you had arthritis and we're pushing 70 and we're all alone. Well, look, Dad, it, it's not that we don't like her, but... Well, the last time she was here, she even got on your nerves. Well, that was entirely different. Maybe this being the Christmas holidays, she'll be fun to have around. Who'll be fun? Well, your Aunt Hattie, dear. She might come visit us. No fool? That's right, sir. Oh, I'm glad. She tells awful good stories. I like her. Well, you run along now and get your things off. Okay, Mommy. Now listen, I'll confess Aunt Hattie's a little set in her ways. But surely we can manage to spare a day or two for her, can't we? After all, it is Christmas. <laughs> Just fine now. Oh, it's so good to see you. Well, it's wonderful to see you. You look beautiful. Thank you, dear. Oh, the children have changed so, and Sue has grown out of all bounds. Here, let me take your gouache. Oh, thank you, dear. My, my, what a trip, Lucille. I never saw the light of it. Snow half the time and such icy roads. The driver was careful, all right. But I was never so thankful as when we pulled into the station and I got out. Felt something solid under my feet again. Well, you must be exhausted. Come on, sit down. Exhausted, my dear. I think my back is nearly broken. A day and a half. And trying to sleep so with my arthritis and all. Oh, I never thought I'd laugh till I got here. Well, in spite of your trip, you're certainly looking well, Aunt Annie, didn't she? Yes, indeed. Well, I don't suppose I should complain. But I haven't been feeling very well. And it's hard for somebody like me, you know, living alone. Well, you're here now. And I can't tell you how glad I am. Oh, I have so much to tell you. Oh, I, I don't think I should bother you, but do you remember Cousin Mildred? Yes. Well, she's been feeling so poorly for a couple of years, and the doctors can't find out exactly what's wrong with their poor things. Oh, and Mrs. Clark, my landlady, she fell down and broke her ankle a couple of months ago, and it's been laid up all that time. And Hattie, you probably want to freshen up. Why don't you let me show you to your room? Well, I, I would kind of like to lie down for a while. My back, you know. Oh, oh, and that reminds me. Mrs. Blake, a great friend of mine, who lives halfway down the block. She had a bad back, and honestly, she had bad work. Oh, she could be so nice if only... Yeah. 
Maybe once she gets it all out of her system. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Getting colder and colder. I know, but isn't it nice to have the snow? Yes, particularly for Christmas. Here, I'll help you with this. Thank you, dear. Just put it in the closet. Oh, you keep your house nice and warm. That's what I like. Oh, weren't the stores lovely, all the decorations? Yes, they were very pretty. Judy, we're home. Okay, Mom. I've got to go, Margo. They're back. So I'll call you about my slumber party just as soon as I know for sure when my aunt's leaving. Well, it's got to be soon. She was only going to stay for a day or so, and it's been nearly a week now. Yeah, I sure hope she picked up a little Christmas bear downtown. Okay, Marco. Keep your fingers crossed. Bye. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. How'd you go? Oh, it was fine. I showed Aunt Hattie all the sights. Yes, we went through the stores and everything. Not much like what we have back east where I live. And goodness, I never saw such crowds. Everyone looked so worried. Pushing and shoving. Oh, you'd never know it was Christmas except for the decorations. Well, people do get a little frantic this close to Christmas. When I was a girl, things were different. Yes, I suppose. But times do change. Sad to say. Even the Santa Clauses looked unhappy today. <laughs> Christmas. Well, I think I'll go to my room and change my shoes. My feet are killing me. But thank you, Lucille. It was very kind of you. Anything please her? Oh, Judy, let's remember that she's old and full of aches and sad memories. And maybe at Christmas it just makes things worse for her. She has so little, poor dear. Yeah, sure, Mom. Is she anything about leaving? No. But I'll ask your father to talk to her again. After all, she's his aunt. I've tried. What else can I do? I can't just tell her to leave. Well, somebody's got to do something. I'm nearly a wreck. And Ronnie and Judy, they don't dare invite their friends over. I know, but I can't just boot her out. She's family. Well, we're both on edge. And we're forgetting something. If she's going to be in California in time for Christmas with Aunt Sarah, then she'll have to leave Monday. It's only another 48 hours. I'll make it up to you, dear. Oh, don't be silly. She is family. And we still have nearly a week until Christmas. I've got an idea. Aunt Hattie used to make terrific Christmas cookies when I was a kid. Maybe we can keep her busy making some for Sue. Now you tell me. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. And pretty soon, you're the best cooking helper I ever had. Honest? Honest. Aunt Hattie? Yes, dear. Who made the first Christmas cookie? <laughs> well, I really don't know, Sue. But I imagine it was somebody who was very happy just remembering that Christmas is our Lord Jesus' birthday. And that is something for us to be happy about, isn't it? Want to know why else I'm happy? My dear. Because you're here. I love you. Bless you, Sue. And I love you too, dear, very much. Your mother would have had our heads. <laughs> We're down here. There we are. Hey, you're not in bad shape. You've got to last another year. 
don't suppose it's too bad for being a 10 year old snowman. That's right, you kids were pretty young when we got him. Judy, how you come with those lights? We gonna need many bulbs? Yeah, we have a few empty packets. We'll need a few more. Look, do you have to bring all this stuff through here? Well, why not? It's cold outside. Yeah, we'd freeze, Mom. Well, now simmer down. We'll have it out of your way in a few minutes, but we first gotta figure out what we're gonna do with these things before we take them out. What's all this? <laughs> this is the stuff for the outside decoration. After we have breakfast, we're gonna put them up. You mean you're not going to church? Well, uh, no, Aunt Hattie. We, uh, we have so much to do, we thought we'd stay home just this once and catch up on things. Oh, I see. Of course, if you'd like to go to church, I'll be glad to drive you over. We have a fine minister. You'd probably enjoy hearing him. Well, I'd like to hear him, but... But I don't think I'd care to go alone. Oh, it's a very friendly church, Aunt Hattie. What about Sue? Isn't she going to Sunday school? Well, we decided that none of us would go today, with Christmas so close and so much to be done. You know how it is, Aunt Hattie. Yes. Well, if uh, no one else is going, I don't like to put you out, Glenn. I could walk. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't hear of it. It's too far. Well, I'd be happy to drive you. Thank you. I'll, I'll finish getting ready. We can't let her go alone. Well, we've got to get our decorations up. And it's going to take all day. I don't care. It's embarrassing. I agree. Well, we better go change our clothes. Oh, boy, I sure will be glad when she's gone. That'll do, Judy. Now all of you run along and get ready while I hurry up breakfast. <laughs> afternoon getting our decorations up. Yes, we figure she'll let us know maybe tonight about leaving. So as soon as she does, we can get things rolling. Uh-huh. It's a beautiful tree. Uh, do you really like it? Yes, Ronnie. It, it's very unusual. But somehow I miss the fragrance of a real pine tree. Well, uh, maybe we could squirt with some perfume or something. Oh, honey? Oh, sure, I can take a joke. It's like the minister said this morning. The wrappings of Christmas change, but the real meaning of Christmas never changes. It was a good sermon. Oh, uh, by the way, Glenn, whatever happened to that crash I gave you a long time ago? Uh, the one my grandfather brought over from the old country. Well, it must have been mislaid when we moved last time. Well, there are still so many things stored in the basement. It's probably there somewhere. What the crash? Well, that's the nativity scene, dear. You know, with the shepherds and the baby Jesus in the manger. Oh, let's look for it. <laughs> well, not right now, honey. I wouldn't know where to begin. But we'll find it before Christmas. Okay. Then you can see it. Well, I'm afraid I'll be well on my way to California by that time. <laughs> oh, please, Uncle. Stay for Christmas. Well, I'm sorry, Sue, but I, I only intended to stay for a day or so, and I've been here nearly a week. You've got to stay. But, Sue, Aunt Sarah's expecting her. We mustn't be selfish. But I don't want her to go. Oh, bless you, dear. I don't want to go either. But I mustn't wear out my welcome. Well, of course, we'd be delighted to have you stay for Christmas, but we know how anxious Aunt Sarah must be to see you. You really mean it? You want me to stay? Of course. But uh, we realize Aunt Sarah must have plans for you, too, and we wouldn't want you to disappoint her. Oh, I don't think Sarah would mind. After all, I'm going to spend the rest of the winter with her. 
I can't think of anything I'd rather do than spend Christmas right here with you folks. I was wondering, is it all right if I call Sarah long distance instead of writing? Why, of course. Thank you. I'll pay for the call. Oh, and Glenn, it's so wonderful of you folks to want me to stay for Christmas. I can't begin to tell you what it means to me. Well, we're just glad you could, Aunt Hattie. Say, why don't you use the phone in the den? It's quieter there. And give Aunt Sarah our best. I will. Thank you, dear. So thanks to my little sister, Aunt Hattie's way to save for Christmas. You can say that again. Mom blames Dad for not settling things at the start. Well, Dad saw so Mom for being too quick to invite Aunt Hattie to stay. So we're stuck with her. If she'd only stop talking about all her trouble and about how everything was better when she was a girl and... Aunt Hattie! I didn't know anyone was in here. I, I should have knocked. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's all right, Judy. I don't know what to say. Let's not say anything. Let's just pretend you didn't say it and that I didn't hear it. All right? Is Sue up yet? No. Well, I wanted to tell you something before she woke up. I did a bit of thinking last night, and I'm afraid I was hasty when I said I could stay for Christmas. Oh, it was nice of you to ask me, but, but after all, Sarah is expecting me, and well, I, I think I'd better stick with my original plans. And if I caught a bus today, I... I could get to California before Christmas. Well, now, Aunt Hattie, are you sure? Oh, we'd hate to see you leave. Of course, if you feel you really should. Yes, I... I really do. so worried about the traffic. Ronnie, would you check these for Aunt Hattie? Sure, Dad. Thank you, dear. Aunt Hattie, 
we didn't have time to find you a gift, so we want you to take this money and buy yourself something very nice in California. Oh, thank you, but I, I couldn't. Oh, now, there's no time to argue. Well, it, it's very kind of all. Final call, Well, I guess you'd better get on board, Aunt Hattie. And we want you to have a very Merry Christmas. Same to all of you. <laughs> Hi, dear. Where's Stu? In a room, I guess. You know, it's too bad Aunt Hattie couldn't have stayed. She and Sue were getting along so beautifully. Yeah, you know something? Sue really brought out Aunt Hattie's good side. Honestly, I feel rather sad now that she's gone. Christmas. Yeah, I guess so. Want me to put them under the tree? All right, dear. Now be careful, don't drop them. Well, I just hope she had a good time while she was here. Yeah, I do too. Well, she didn't. Why do you say that? Because I spoiled everything for her. She heard me talking on the phone to Marco about, about us not wanting her to stay for Christmas. And now I can just die. We've certainly shown a fine Christmas spirit, haven't we? All the trimmings and nothing underneath. Judy, the rest of us are just as guilty as you are. You were only saying out loud what each of us was thinking. Except Sue. Just the same, I shouldn't have said what I did. Well, I agree, Judy. Well, it's a little late to think of that now. Maybe our trouble is we've all had it too good. You know, none of us has ever known what it is to be lonely or sick or to have wants that couldn't be easily met. We live in our little world, and we couldn't possibly bring ourselves to share our blessings with someone less fortunate. Even at Christmas. I guess none of us really listened to the pastor last Sunday, when he talked about how Christ came to us in love. We couldn't even open our hearts to one of our own family. I feel terrible. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we have them get Aunt Hattie off the bus at the next stop, and then we'll go and pick her up. Oh, could we, Dad? She may not want to come back. Well, we can try. Let's go. Listen, I better stay here with Sue. All right, you call the bus, will you, dear? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we had them give you a message about an emergency. We were afraid you wouldn't get off the bus, at least long enough to talk to us. And believe me, it was an emergency. It's all my fault. Oh, dear. We're all to blame. And we want you to come home with us now for Christmas. Well, well that all depends. Boy, Aunt Hattie, you've got to believe us. We are sorry. First, you've got to believe something, too. But I'm sorry for the way I was. What Judy said was true. It's easy to start feeling sorry for yourself when you live alone. Before you know it, you're going around finding fault and talking gloomy. So if you'll forgive me too, I'd love to come home with you and have a real Christmas. Oh, that's wonderful, Aunt Eddie. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for us. 
Moses, God when the Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head, the stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. That was beautiful, dear. You have a lovely voice, and I wish I could have seen baby Jesus. Yes, dear. But I think we're all feeling his presence right now. I know I am. I think this is the most wonderful Christmas scene. And Harry, you remember the last Christmas I spent in your home? Yes, indeed. That was a long time ago. It was too long. You did something then I'd like you to do now. You read the Christmas story to us. Remember? Yeah. Oh, would you please, Aunt Hattie? Oh, that would be so nice. Here we are. Luke 2. Okay. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Listen. Oh, my God. 